So if someone wants to make their business run better, they do performance appraisals for staff, but they don't do this. Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Massive shout out to all those who have rated and reviewed this podcast. Takes like two seconds, you literally just click on the little star rating and give us a star rating, but it helps us to get out to more people. It helps this community grow and we keep getting more Driven Mofos on this community or in this community. And it's awesome to have so many people from around the world tune into this podcast. Like it blows my mind every week just to think of the amount of people that listen to this podcast and just listen to me share advice, ramble on about stuff and talk about some of the crazy shit that happens in my life. But anyway, let's get into this episode. So what I want to talk about is if you think about a business, good businesses normally do performance appraisals for staff. Now, if you think about what a performance appraisal is, it's checking in on the performance of staff members to see how effective they're going, what they need help with, where they might be dropping their standards, and then helping them to consistently grow. They're an important part of business growth if you want to have a high performance team. Yet, one of the biggest factors in all businesses and in everybody's life, everybody who's listening to this right now, if you are a high performer and you want to achieve more in life, hence why the community is called the Driven Mofos, if you're a Driven Mofo and you want more out of yourself, you want more out of life and you want to live a better life, imagine not doing performance appraisals on yourself on a daily or a weekly basis. It's crazy. So something that I learned many, many years ago is that every day, really, you want to do a performance appraisal on yourself. And the way that that looks is at the end of the day, you want to look back at your day. And you want to know what you did well, what you can improve upon, or where you can do things better, and then what you need to tweak for tomorrow. So you can start making adjustments on a daily basis to improve the way that you operate. Also, what it does is it helps you to create better habits. So the more you can do performance reviews and performance appraisals on yourself, the more effective you become. The more you do what most people do, and that is just do the same shit that they always do, the less effective you become over time. Because as you age, your productivity starts dropping, your effectiveness starts dropping, you become more tired, you become more burnt out, your body hurts more and your body aches more, and so you become less effective. Now, if you're smart, you become more effective as you get older. Most people, though, just don't. They actually get worse. So here are some other key things that you may do. So what I would recommend, these are my recommendations. So first thing, you want to book in time in your calendar every day. Now, it might be at the end of your workday. So if you're a business owner, you might book it in before you go home. If you're not a business owner, then you just book it in at whatever time you can. So it might be 7 o'clock at night after you put the kids to bed, or it might be 8.30 at night before you get into bed. Sometimes you'll do it in bed. So Jess normally does hers in bed every night. She'll sit there with her journal and she'll do a performance appraisal. Now, it's not like the logical sheet that you fill out. She just grabs a journal or a book, a notepad, and she'll write in there, what did I do well today? You want to train yourself to look at what you're doing well. Something that I notice is that most driven mofos out there beat the shit out of themselves because their strategy for achievement is to put themselves under pressure and to make themselves feel like they're insecure, not good enough, not achieving enough and not doing enough. If you do that, though, that is a mental health problem that you have that you've had since you're a kid because someone told you that you weren't good enough, you weren't smart enough, or you weren't doing enough. And so you thought that because someone criticized you and judged you, love got taken away. And now you're a fully grown fucking adult. And as a fully grown adult, you keep thinking every day, I'm not doing enough. I'm not achieving enough. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not doing all these right things. I'm not doing 400 hours worth of work in a 24-hour time period. And because of that, I'm worthless or I'm not good enough. That will keep you driven, but it will also keep you mentally destructive. And most people that are driven are like that. I was having a conversation with a bunch of business owners yesterday who were looking at signing up to my Business Growth Odyssey program, which is my high-level mastermind for business owners that are doing over 300K a year. And you know the biggest business we've got in there at the moment is about 50 million in revenue. So these are growth-driven business owners that want to grow. They're not brand new startup businesses, but they've been you know, in business for a year or two and they want to grow, they want to be better. And more importantly, they want to surround themselves with people that are growth driven, that are doing the right things. So we're just sitting down and we're having a bit of a chat. And I was talking about how important mindset is in business. And I said, where most business owners go wrong and where most people go wrong is that they look at strategy, structure. They look at certain things that they need to do. So they might write a to-do list and then tick stuff off, even if they're not business owners, right? They're writing to-do lists, they're ticking things off. That is a strategy, that is a plan. That is something that's a physical, tangible thing that you're working on. 
very few people ever look in the mirror and realize that the biggest fucking problem that they always have, almost 99% of the time, is themselves or other people. Yet they spend very, very small amounts of time trying to understand people better or working on themselves more. And so what I said is, I know that the majority of people in my community, hence they're called the driven mofos, put too much pressure on themselves. They're more likely to overwork than they are to underwork. They are more likely to work too much than work not enough. They are more likely to be mentally destructive because they'll sit on the couch and then feel like they're not doing enough, beat themselves up because they feel like they don't deserve rest, even though they know they deserve rest and they're trying to rest, but at the same time, they can't rest. Because when they're trying to rest, their brain's kicking and saying, we got to do this. we got to get this done. This has to happen. That's the habits of a driven mofo. Hence why I called the community that. Now, if you go out to normal mental health circles or mindset coaches, or you go out to the motivation industry, the motivation is built on motivating people more. Driven mofos don't need more motivation. They're already motivated. They know they want to achieve. They know they want to get shit done. The problem is they don't know how to wind down. They don't know how to let themselves calm down. So their nervous system is always wound up. Their mindset is always off the chart. Like it's, you know, if you're a car, it's revving in the red line. They're redlining their mind. And so for most people that are driven, the only way that they can relax is normally through drugs, alcohol, or alcohol consumption. Hence why most driven people on weekends, they have to drink because it's the only way that they can mentally relax. Alcohol is such a fucked up solution for people to relax. And every week I meet people that are like, you know, I'm just going to go away for the weekend, have a couple of drinks, you know, relax, just chill out. They're not relaxing and chilling out. All they're doing is they have a strategy through the use of alcohol to calm themselves down. But at the same time, you're essentially putting more pressure on your digestive system. You're jacking yourself up with extra calories that you don't need. Alcohol is a toxin, so your liver has to work harder now. You're normally going to be more tired. Your brain definitely doesn't like alcohol, so you're mentally less effective. But for a lot of people, they think that it helps calm them down. It does not do that. All it does is it's a depressant. So it will make you feel a little bit numb, and it will bring you down. So it depresses you. Now, when we think about what depress or the word depression means, when you depress something, you push it down. Now, why do people depress themselves or push themselves down, especially when they're really, really driven, when they're over-exaggerating their energy, when they're hyperactive, when someone is overworking themselves, they are going above what they can handle. So they're, they're pushing themselves above the limits all the time. And because they're pushing themselves above the limits, eventually they have to depress themselves in order to get some form of balance back into their life again. You do that for long enough, though, you might end up with clinical depression or just feeling like shit about your life consistently. Not a good strategy. So what I was speaking to these business owners about was I said, look, most patterns around mental health and mindset don't work for driven people. Most people in the population are really lazy. Driven people aren't lazy. They think that they're lazy, but they're not lazy. They work harder than most people. The problem is they overwork and then burn themselves out. And when they burn themselves out, they feel like they're lazy, but it's them trying to recover from being overproductive or being hyperactive or not controlling their time effectively. So this is why spending time doing a performance review daily or a performance appraisal daily and sitting there and saying, am I overworking today? Am I managing my time effectively? Also, you need to know what you did well because most driven people will beat themselves up for not doing enough, not being enough, not achieving enough, not pushing themselves hard enough. And they compare themselves to the ideal, which for most driven people, it's like, if my alarm goes off at six o'clock, I want to be so productive and so effective that I don't waste a second of my day until I fall asleep at 10 o'clock at night. But that is so unrealistic. Now, comparing yourself to that comparison, you're going to try and squeeze as much as you can out of yourself until you melt down and burn out. That is not an effective strategy. Most driven people actually work less. So if you've got a scaling business, you need to work less and think more. You need to be more effective with your thinking. One of the things that I do right now is every day I think about energy management. So I think, how am I going to manage my energy today? If I'm doing two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching, back to back, I know I'm going to be tired and burnt out afterwards. So what I need to do is I need to have some me time. What I'm just starting to do now is I'll do one hour of coaching, then I do one hour off. Now that one hour off, I'll go and have a workout or I'll go for a walk, or I will go and do something different. I might do some reading or I might do some journaling. Now, if I'm doing 
let's say an hour of coaching and then I've got an hour of work. So I've got an hour of ad administrative work that I do, or I've got to reply back to emails or I'm doing stuff on Instagram because I do all my own Instagram. So if you get a message from me on Instagram, it's me. But what my point is, is I have to structure my time to manage my energy effectively because what I used to do, and this was before I did performance appraisals, I would wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I would work flat out on a Monday. I would go super hard until 8.30 at night. Tuesday, I would wake up a little bit later because the alarm would go off and I'd hit snooze because I was a little bit fatigued. Then I would work and try to push myself all day, but my productivity would drop to about 80, maybe 70%. By Wednesday, my productivity is at 50%. So even when I was working, I was half productive, half unproductive. I was thinking about other shit, a lot of stuff on my mind. By Thursday, I'm at about 30% capacity and I'm tired. I'm fatigued. I can't concentrate effectively. My brain's jumping around between things. I'm getting frustrated at people and this stuff is not working. Then on Friday, Friday was almost a write-off. Then on Saturday, I would sleep in, I would relax, I would chill out. And by the afternoon, my energy is coming back up and I'm becoming more effective again. By Sunday, I'm ready for Monday and I'm ready to rock and roll and I'm ready to go again. What I realized is my weeks had these huge peaks and troughs. Once I started doing performance appraisals on myself, I went, shit, I need to back off Monday a little bit. I need to back off Tuesday a little bit. I probably am good on Wednesday. Thursday, though, I just need to be more balanced and up it a little bit more. And Friday, I can up it more and I can work Saturdays as well. And so now I'm a lot more balanced in my time. Also, I don't do everything for everybody else. I do everything for me. And what I mean by that is that when my team come to me and say, I need all this stuff, it can fit in a block where I'm working. But when I have my half an hour where I'm doing other shit away from you know standard business operations or, or anything like that, what that does is it allows me to think more effectively about strategy, strategic planning, how I manage people, how I'm communicating, and everybody works more effectively. That all came from just having time every day doing a performance appraisal myself. So what we want to start with is we want to start with what we're already doing well to remind ourselves that we're actually doing a good job. Because if you're a driven person, you're naturally going to look at what you're not doing. You're going to look at that I'm not doing enough, I'm not achieving enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, the team aren't working effectively, they're not producing enough, and you go straight to the negative or the disempowering. You need to change that and flip that around so that you're starting to train yourself to stay empowered, right? These days, I just stay empowered. If I catch myself in a negative state or a disempowered state, I flip it around quick because life's too good. Life's awesome if you just see it that way, and you can see it both from the negative or the positive, the benefit or the disadvantage. You can see it from the growth, or you can see it from where you're not growing. You can see it all. It's just one makes you feel like shit and the other one keeps you empowered. So we start off by making ourselves empowered by looking at the things that we're already doing well. Then what we do is we say, where can we improve? Where could have we tweaked today, improved upon something? And then maybe we want to have a look at our energy. Where did my energy slump? What did I do? Did I eat shit at lunchtime and my energy dropped? If that's the case, then we clean up the diet a little bit. Is it that I overslept? then we tune that up a little bit. Is it that I'm not getting enough sleep? Then we need to tune that up a little bit. And that means that we're always just making these micro tweaks every day to keep our energy high throughout the day and more balanced and more stable. When you do that, your performance will massively increase as an individual. Anyway, Driven Mofos, jump across to my Instagram page. Go and check it out. But I want you to send me a message. If you're listening to this episode and you're going to start doing performance appraisals on yourself, jump across to my Instagram let me know that you've listened to this episode and that you're going to do the performance appraisals because I would love to hear how you go and what you learn about yourself. So shoot me a message. Just jump in my DMs or my inbox and say, how hey, I listened to the podcast episode. Loved it. I'm going to do my performance appraisal and I'll get back to you in a week and let you know how I go. I would love to hear the learnings that you get about yourself by doing daily performance appraisals on yourself. Now, look, I know that you're a driven mofo. I know that you're going to do what most driven mofos do. You're going to miss a day. And when you miss a day, you're going to beat the shit out of yourself and feel really bad and guilty and ashamed and like you're the worst, most horrible fucking person on the planet because you missed one day of your performance appraisals. Don't stress about it. That's a learning and a lesson in itself that you need to put in your performance appraisal. That it's okay. If you miss something, it's not that big a deal. Just keep moving forward and keep bettering yourself. The goal of life is consistent and never-ending improvement. So providing you're improving yourself, you're already on the right track. So anyway, jump across to Instagram. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day. Remember to share this podcast with other people as well. Let them know about what I do. Driven mofos, have a great day. Keep kicking ass. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them.